We are here today at the Aspen Leadership Seminar Philosophy and Practice 2022, our first one in person since the pandemic broke out. And Carol, you have been one of our longtime moderators of the seminar. Tell us, what, does, what makes the Aspen Leadership Seminar different from other leadership seminars? Well, I think the Aspen Leadership Seminars, which are very old, they go back uh, to 1951 in the United States, and the Aspen Leadership Seminars held around the world today, including Germany, are all influenced by those early seminars, and their goal is not to teach leadership or to provide guidelines or manuals for uh, for executives or or leaders, public leaders. The goal is actually to give people who are in any position uh, an opportunity to step back, reflect, think about the world, the world the big world out there, the smaller world around themselves and their families and their workplaces and their own values. So the language of values-based leadership, what are our values? What are the values that make a good society or make the good life? And how do you actually implement them in your daily life? And the way that the Aspen seminars do that is by reading text. They read, read text from the ancient philosophers to the contemporary writers, all of whom from different places are asking fundamental questions. What is the good life? What is human nature? What are the principles of order in society? What is the economic uh, organization and or organizations? What are the possibilities? There's no, not only one. So you read it, you read a text, you think about it, you, you read the text together, you read it first alone, you read it together, you talk about it together, and these conversations that you have both with the text, I mean, you're basically talking to Aristotle at, at some point, or you're talking to Marx at another point, but you're also talking to one another and you're talking about the world that we all live in, which means you're talking to today, and then you're also in, and kind of internal dialogue with yourself about how you behave, how you lead, how you operate. So it's, it's a, it's, I would like to say it's philosophical, but not abstract. It's, it's philosophy and practice. It's not a theoretical uh, conclusion about this is how I would behave in an ideal world. This is how you do you face a challenge, a dilemma. I mean, life isn't easy, decisions aren't easy. Uh, uh, what kind of courage do you have of your convictions? When are you? When do you cooperate? When do you? When do you capitulate? Uh, so it's a, it's not the usual leadership seminar. Um, people usually say, and they've been saying this for decades, that it is a transformative experience because most of us don't have the time to step back from our daily life and reflect, right? Or be mindful of, uh, or to contemplate or even think <laughs> about what it is that, that uh, impels us and animates us. Uh, I mean, we, we know we have values, but you know, how do we live them? So it's that, it's that moment away from, uh, if you wanna call it the real world, that enables us, we hope, and we've seen it over the years, enables us to go back to the real, real world, kind of inspired and inhabited with, with, with sometimes new resolutions, sometimes, sometimes just new ideas, and sometimes just a, a um, confirmation of the things that we really believe in and, and, and want to, uh, to act on and use to make change in the world, to make a better world to make a better person for ourselves, to make a better family, to make a better uh, uh, workplace or organization, and essentially to make a better world. I think there is a fair bit of idealism in this, even though our conversations are quite practical because they actually emerge from our lives and each of us has a story to tell, many stories to tell. And the texts help us do that. I mean, it's interesting how 
a play like Antigone or Antigone, which is performed in practically every language around the world. I mean, it's a story that travels like few others. Everybody understands it in their own cultures. Uh, a story like Antigone makes sense today. I mean, this is, we are far, far from, from ancient Greece. But these are basic questions, and there are all kinds of answers, no, no, no single or simple answer. And these texts really help us to see, uh, actually, the complexity, I think. Uh, but they, I, in a way, they cheer us up, because when you talk about these things together, it feels slightly less of a mountain to climb than if you think about them in isolation. And that, I think, is what's distinctive about the Aspen seminars. And I think that you, you will talk with alumni, people who have taken the seminars in, in earlier years, and you'll hear something of the echo of this kind of, of a perception of what the seminars are like and what they, the impact they have on each of us, including the moderators, including us. I mean, we do this because every seminar is different, because every seminar group is different, because every individual in that group is different, and therefore every conversation is different. Nothing has changed in Antigone in 2,500 years, but our discussions change every time.